Hey, it's Jeff from Home Renovision here today, and today we are talking textured walls. And I'm not going to show you how to make it. I'm going to show you how to fix them if you end up getting a hole in it. Because let's face it, I've done a lot of videos over the years talking about how to patch and repair drywall. And everybody keeps asking me, what if I have a textured wall? So I textured a wall, and now we're going to deal with this. How to make it look like that never happened. Okay, so first thing we need, of course, is a piece of drywall. And I'm going to save this piece for later because when we do the texture repair, I'm going to show you like, I think three or four different options for creating texture. That way you can match what you have in your situation a little bit closer. Now in this channel, we like to show you more than one option to do everything. So I'm going to need a second hole. There we go. Now I'll show you two ways to fix it. <laughs> First one, of course, is we're going to take the knife and, and the reason I'm going to show you both of them at the same time is so you can judge which one you think turns out better and then which one you, you want to use. Because whenever you're dealing with texture, anywhere along this wall, it's different. The secret is blending and getting that same kind of texture. Things that affect texture are how wet was the mud when it was put on? Was it used with an air sprayer or just a gravity fed hopper? Um, did they travel it right away? Did they let it sit for a while? I mean, there's a lot of what was the humidity in the room like? There's so many factors that go into what the texture ends up being. Matching it is really tricky. So we're gonna do two different techniques here. Show you the different tricks for how to get it matched. We'll go from there. The first one you wanna just draw a square. Now, because I'm using a knife, <coughs> you wanna just kinda of wiggle it in and just cut the actual size of this hole out. That, in a lot of cases, will protect your vapor barrier from getting cut because you can set the depth of the knife. Here we go. Okay, step one. Now down here, what I want to do, I just want to cut the paper back. Okay, so using the knife just to get rid of the, the paper on the edge because I don't want damaged paper there. This repair technique requires a nice solid edge. Push some of this crap out of the way a little bit. Now, bum, 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 bum. first technique we've seen before, we've used the foam in other situations. Foam and drywall work amazing together because it has about the same amount of density as drywall. And so it provides the same structural strength, but it also has an adhesive property. So it can be really handy when you're using something like this, bonding two pieces of drywall together, or just filling up a hole like this. Now, while the foam is setting up, we'll deal with up here. Now, we do want to make a California patch, and we've done that on videos many times before, but since not everybody here has seen every one of my videos, I'll do it again for you. Basically, we're going to just cut a piece of drywall and then we're going to go from the back side. I need a sharper knife here too. Love these breakaway blades. Instantly as sharp as you need it to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just trace out the line inside here like this and then left to right as well. And that is generally the size of the hole I'm filling. Now I just break it and I peel and leave the paper. And this makes an incredible patch because this paper here is attached to the, the, the drywall and it's thinner than drywall paper tape so that when you do your patch, you want to keep everything as thin as possible. Retexturing, you don't want to have a hump or a bump. So this is what's going to work there. <laughs> Next step is we have to get rid of this extra texture. If we don't break down the texture and remove it back to the drywall, we're making a hump and then trying to texture that it's always going to be visible. So you can take a knife and you can try it. Your texture is going to put up quite a fight. And you're only going to be so successful. Unless it's a stipple wall, this really doesn't work. You're going to want to grab this, all right? Now, just so you know, I'll try it with a regular sanding sponge and we'll see what kind of success we get. But we're sanding painted drywall. It's had a primer. So even with all that work, I got lots of texture there still. That's just not going to cut it.
ask for that, but that is how you get that. Now we're right back to the original drywall paper and we're ready to patch. Now, while my foam is setting up, I'm also gonna put another dent over here next to the plug where I know there's a stud and we're gonna just fill it and then do the texture and you can get to see what happens if you don't take it all the way back to the paper. That should be wood. Yep. Now, one of the greatest inventions for homeowners ever is the dry deck spackling. It's the stuff that goes on pink and then finishes nice and white. It almost always needs to be stirred up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now, we're gonna just patch this without doing anything else. Okay, and you can see, maybe for smaller patches, this works. You wanna really pull it tight. Leave a little extra on the hole so you can't identify it because when it dries, it does shrink a little bit. And then we'll come back to that one in a minute as well. Okay, so when you're doing a patching job on drywall, you've got options. You have um, all-purpose drywall, the stuff that comes pre-mixed, or you can buy it in powder form. You can buy it in 20, 45, or 90 minute working time capability. Don't forget, if you're on well water, you're adding salts and minerals, it dries faster. If you use warm water instead of cold, it dries faster. So you can make whatever adjustments you need to with that. I like working with 45 because it has a nice finish and it sands well too. Okay, 90 just takes too long for me. And in most applications, the only time I use a 90 is when I'm taping with mesh tape. But for a patch repair, I'll use a 20 or a 45. And I've had this comment so many times before. This is CGC Sheetrock 45. If you are in the United States, you won't find this product. What you're gonna see instead is a USG 45. This is Canadian Gypsum Company. Down in the States, it's United States Gypsum. Really kind of easy to get that around your head. So you realize it's the same product, just different manufacturing. So you can get the 45 or the 20 or the 90 at every drywall store that's around. So not a worry, it's not a specialty product. You can go down to your local harbor store and get it. And we're just making a volcano again. Ha, la, 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 la. And adding our cold water. And the reason I'm choosing to use this instead of the um, all-purpose drywall compound is, in a lot of cases, this can take two or three coats of work. And it's nice to be able to start and finish a project like this in the same day. <laughs> so if you use the regular compound, um, depending on your skill level, you might find that it just takes too long for everything to dry. And then you're doing something for a whole weekend and making a mess. I like to do stuff like this, get it done, and then move on and have some fun. I probably don't have enough water in here, but maybe I do. Let's just widen out the volcano a little bit. Yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. All right. Now, I've done this before in other videos, and I actually go through the step-by-step -step on how to mix this a lot better in another video. We'll link it in the video description, put a card in the video as well, so you understand the science behind what I'm doing. For the sake of this video, I just want to make the mud and get moving on here. Okay, so now we're back. Uh, first thing, before you get going, make sure your patch fits. Check for mobility. Up and down, there's not a lot of room, but on the sides there is. So, I'm going to just move my mud to the other side of my pan here. And I'm going to add mud to the side of the block on both sides, just to help make sure that I am getting a good fill. Okay, there we go. Now, we want to put it on the sides, all four sides here. So we have some mud to put the tape into, or the paper, okay? It's like bedding it. There we go. And then we'll just press it into the hole. And we'll use the knife to span the gap. Make sure that it's nice and flat. And then we'll pull the mud out from behind the paper and leave it pressed in nice and flat. Don't overwork it here, okay? Or you'll end up with wrinkled paper and then it's just gonna be frustrating. So we're gonna just take all the excess off all the way around. Okay, there's that wrinkling I was talking about. It just creates a whole mess. All right, that one's good. We'll let that one dry. It's gonna take about a 20 minutes or so to set up, and then we'll come back and do the next coat. 
So now with the foam, we just want to gently press it. It's been sitting for five or 10 minutes now. It means the outside of it is going to not be sticky anymore. So you can just press it and fill the gap so that you don't have to cut it off later. All right, there we go. That's good. And we'll let that finish setting up before we patch it. We want it to be nice and stiff. Here we are, about an hour later. Nice and hard. Stuff works like a charm. And this is also nice and firm, ready to hold on, uh, to hold the new mud. So I'm just going to take my knife like this and just trim back. Make sure everything is, I don't want to raise surface here anywhere, okay? That's good, okay. Now, I'm gonna mix a little bit more 45, apply it to this patch, do another little thin coat around the outside of that edge, and then we wait again. Okay, here we go. So, just like we did with the other dent over there, this one finishes very really similar, but because it's, because I'm making 45, I might as well use it. The secret when you're doing this, again, is try to leave a little bit extra right where the actual hole was, okay? Because I know 45 doesn't shrink much, but if you have a lot of filler going on, it will shrink a little bit, all right? Clean that up, come around the outside of the edge, and really make sure you scrape it well so you're not leaving extra mud in the texture. The last thing you want to do is end up flattening all of this out. Right now it looks textured, but what it is, it's filling in and it can cause a problem. Now, up here, we're going to go a little bit thinner. We're going to work around to where the sanded area is and pull it towards the middle. Our goal here is just to create a smooth surface that we can then add texture to. We don't want to start building up the mud around the sanded off area. Okay. All right. Now, if you need to, if your patch is bigger, you can pull out the big four by 10. All right. And you can just run it across. Make sure that that's nice and flat. All right. And use a wet sponge or your thumb, whatever, but make sure you get all the extra ridges out of the way. All right. I'm happy with that. Now, the other patch, you can see the pink, it's still not dry in the middle, so we're not going to touch this one. We're going to wait to come back, and then the last application, we'll use pink on all three. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it, it doesn't really take much. It's just a uh, last little bit to get rid of all the ridges. We want to have a smooth surface before you add texture. I know texture is used to hide imperfections, but when you're patching, you really want to keep everything as perfect as you can before you add it. It uh, reduces the amount of work that you're going to get involved with when you're trying to match. And you'll understand better when we start applying the texture. I have two different techniques for doing that. We'll show you both. So don't go anywhere. And if you like learning information like this, make sure you give this video a thumbs up right now before we get back for number third coat. And don't forget to go into the comments section. If you have different texture or you've got questions about your specific situation, I'll be happy to jump in there when the video comes out and answer those questions as best I can. All right, so we're back. Now, we're not patching like traditional patches on a smooth wall. Smooth walls, you can add mud, you can stretch it out over a large area. When you're dealing with texture, you got to keep it right and tight. So now we're going to take a moment and we're going to just gently sand back all of our ridges back to our the original dimension of what we sanded out, okay? Because we want to be working with the closest possible thickness of this wall. Now I got ridges here. I got a couple ridges here. We're going to deal with that in a second. Okay. Same thing. Because it's a sponge, it can sand into the texture. So feel free to sand extra material out of the texture around the patch. So this one's the dry decks. <clears throat> this sands really nice as well. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> I could come back with the 45 again. But I'm going to use the dry decks for a reason. Demonstrate this product for you, okay? And if you need to get this, they have it everywhere, all right? If they sell anything to do with homes or repairing things online, you can use our Amazon link. 
in the video description if you want to, but smaller tubes like this, big tubes. The secret is once you open it, it never really seals up the same. So you're gonna have to throw a dab of water in there and then close the lid on it. Okay, you wanna keep that hydrated so it doesn't dry out. Here we go. You see that? It's dark here, but it's pink on the side because there's a small ridge. And so we are going to put pressure on the knife on the tip, right on that line. Try to smooth that out as much as possible. Okay, I like that. Okay, and by using this different color material, it helps us to identify the highs and the lows. Same thing. We're just gonna, there we go. One time through the middle. All right, it's a little bit of leftover here and there, no big deal. We'll take the sanding sponge before we prime it. Same thing with the hole down here. We're just going to be a little generous with it. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Right. There we go. And over here as well. See, when I press, you see the, the dent is actually, it, it's, it's, it's still sunk in a little bit. When it dried, it shrinked, shrunk. <laughs> shrinked it, 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 or shrunk it. The point is, is that just putting it on, if you use, don't use enough pressure, oh, it's lots, it's fine, it's too much. As soon as I use pressure, it's identified. Ah, it was a hole. Okay, now we take all this dry pink. See how dry it is? It's a different color than what's inside the pan. It's okay to put it back in. Okay, now I'm done with this stuff. Drip of water, close it up, and then you can mix it together next time. There we go. And then we wait. Okay, just a note, the dry dex material does not work as a chemical reaction like the 45 mud. So it's actually waiting to get dry by the moisture content releasing into the atmosphere. If you have a humid house, it won't work. It'll just stay pink. So consider that as an option. You might want to put a little fan on it because the more air that you throw across that, the faster it's going to dry out. But you do have to be patient until it just goes white. That's why the colorant is in there, because it tells you when you're ready to sand. If you sand too early, you're just going to destroy it and you're right back to your third coat again. So here's one of the downsides of using the dried X as a final coat. If I use the 45, I'd, I'd know. Give it 30 minutes and it's dry. We've waited 30 minutes. It's still pinkish. It's pretty solid though, right? Like it's just not totally done drying. And to be honest with you, I don't care. I'm just going to give it a nice, just get rid of any bumps, right? That's it, because I've already done all of the outsides. Now it's time to prive, because I put that on everything. All right. And we gotta be somewhat careful here. You don't wanna be sitting in a spot too long and get drips. Okay? And this isn't about having a perfect wall. It's about trying to get as close as possible to minimize the risk of having an issue. Okay? Now we're gonna definitely have to let this dry. This needs five to 10 minutes. And then we're gonna try three different techniques for putting the texture back on the wall and then you can decide what will work good for you, what's good enough, and how to get it absolutely perfect, okay? All right, now, option number one for putting texture on a wall, if it's knocked down or even stipple or spiky, is to use window and door caulking, believe it or not. And you might have like a, what the heck are you doing, Jeff, moment, but that's fine. We're gonna do the application, and then you can judge if you like it or not. Again, you want to cut it so that the tip is pretty thick. Just stripe up the wall. All right. That might look like a lot of caulking, and it might be. Good news is if there's too much, you can just take it off. You just grab your paintbrush, and <laughs> we're going to just go like this. And it looks like there's too much, so I'm going to just wipe it. 
a scrap piece of drywall around. Okay. And you can blend it. And there is too much, just lift it up and put it somewhere else. Okay. This takes a little bit of work. And on the caulking, it's going to be workable for a good 5, 10, 15 minutes. So you're not in a really big hurry here. And you'll notice that the texture is going to be more dramatic than a knockdown, for instance. So then when you get it laid out really nice, just brush it in and then just come back and give it another dab. Now, this is much better on stipple than a knockdown. But in the grand scheme of things, once it's all painted, you might never see the difference. And if you're really good at it, you can take your four inch blade and just kind of skim the surface really gentle and knock those ridges off. Bam, almost invisible. Not bad. Next option involves all-purpose compound. Now this is right out of the box, right out of the bucket, whatever you get, okay? It's too dry to work with. You wanna wet this down and then work it in a little bit. And you're looking for that same kind of consistency I like to use on my third coat, okay? So it's a little runny, but it'll still stay on the trowel. And I'll tell you why. That's the consistency that they used when they made the original texture. When they spray the stuff on, they're using a hopper, like blue bin on the end of a compression hose, and they're using an air compressor, and that application actually kind of dries the mud while it's being thrown at the wall. And so when you do your knockdown, it's almost dry, it's like really quick. It sets up so fast, hence why it's so perfect for it. So we're trying to mimic that texture of the mud to try to mimic the texture as much as possible. And that's great, right? That's runny, but it still stays on the knife. Okay, so number two is this, same thing with the brush, okay, so instead of caulking you just use the mud and you can just apply as much as you need, okay, biggest difference here is that this stuff goes on brown and so it looks a lot different right out of the gate. You want to let that sit for a couple minutes because if you just come after it now, right, it just flattens it out. There's, there's, there's nothing. There's no, that's not texture. Okay. So we got to texturize the wall and we got to let that sit. And then we can knock it down. Or you might even have a texture that looks like this and then that's a perfect situation. Remember, there's like 19 different major textures or more. So depending on your situation, you can pick whatever application you think will suit best. Next option, of course, is to use the roller. Now, we've used rollers when we're applying tape. We can use the roller when we're working on um, smooth skim coating walls. You can actually take a roller, load it up with mud like this, and you can just roll it on, okay? And you can add texture with a mini roller instead of a paintbrush. But the same thing, it leaves peaks. So if you have a peaked finish, you're fine. But since we have knockdown, we have to give this a few minutes and then we'll come back with the trowel. We'll show you what that looks like in a minute. <laughs> so you're probably gonna wanna wait 15, 20 minutes or so, maybe even half an hour until it starts to get thick and stiff. Now, if you're impatient, like I am right now making this video, we're gonna just try to do this. And then what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna spray paint it with the kills again and make it white so you can have an idea what it looks like finished. Remember, when you're doing this, it's all about patience. The more time you put into it, the more time you, if you try it and you don't like it, pull out the brush, pull out the roller, texture it up again. It doesn't hurt to keep going. You can make the spot bigger and bigger and bigger as you want because sometimes if your texture is just not right, it's a small spot, it's big enough that it sticks out of the wall. But if you take the roller, you can do like a few feet and blend it in, right? So the transition's so gradual no one notices. Anyway, here we go. Here's everything. Nice and gentle pressure. Yep. Some places it knocked down and some places it didn't. Oh well. <laughs> We're just gonna go like this. Yep. I'm not happy. I gotta fix it up. That's okay. I'm happier with that. Now, 
just for fun. Let's throw some kills on it so it turn out white and you can see what the finished product looks like. Because I think, at the end of the day, most people are going to be pretty happy with this kind of a kind of a look. All right. Now it's still wet, but it'll all dry together. And for a patch repair, that would probably pass. Now, if you're in a million dollar home and you're doing a patch and you want to do it right, you've got to go buy the blue hopper, use the air compressor, match all of that, and it's a much better technique. But for the average person with a textured wall, this or that or that will all get a pretty decent grade if you ask me. Now, if you'd like to see a video that we produce that uh, talks about proper painting techniques, because after you patch, of course you got to paint, and you can't just paint the patch. Big mistake, because all paint nowadays usually comes with some blend of acrylic, and when you're painting and you come back and do a touch-up, you always have a different level of acrylic in the touch-up. And when if I just paint this one spot, it's the difference in the sheen from the different level of acrylic, that's going to scream more than the texture. So you do have to paint corner to corner, wall to floor to ceiling, do an entire surface when you do a repaint. And in order to do that, you're going to need to know how to brush in the corners. So a lot of information in this video to learn about professional techniques for cutting in and all of your different sheens and stuff like that. You're going to love it. Click the link up here. We will see you in the next video. Cheers till next time.